Welcome back to another episode of 246 guys Yes, we outside Yes guys, I really want to say a special thanks to all of you all guys For subscribing, liking my videos I really appreciate the love man Listen, you all have been messaging me on Instagram Tremendously answering me about one particular race That actually occurs in my uh, last vlog The two Mishibishi courts, you know, you all was very excited about that race. Trust me, everyone was excited because those are two quick, two very quick cars. Um, so there's one particular car that you all have been asking me about, the blue Mishibishi court. Um, a lot of questions that I honestly can't ask, like what type of engine it having, uh, was it set up on it, if it's a street driven car, if it's just, I, a lot of questions. So you know what guys, I give the guy a call. He told me he's free, so I'm actually on my way now to do a vlog on his car so that I can give you all guys what you all guys asked me for. So without further ado guys, I'm gonna just, I'm in my truck already. I'm just gonna head to him, do a vlog on the car. Hopefully the car is still in that same race mode. Um, I'm not sure if he do any picking at it or anything like that, that like we can actually get a drive with it on the road. So with no further ado guys, let's get into this. All right guys, let's go. Alright guys, well I actually arrived by Charlotte um, he's here next to me right now ECU master shirt he has on right there um, If you want look, he has some machines here as well We can just take a little walk See what's going on The car is actually there in the background We're going to get to that He has a Suzuki Baleno And a Turbo Toyota Turbo Starlet Turbo Charge uh, Turbo vehicles here One Turbo Charge Next one here, turbo charge. And the one you all have been asking me questions about all the time. This blue Mishibishi coal. It's here guys. I'm here. Look at it. So when the further Julia see me talk to Charlotte a little bit. So Charlotte, yeah. uh pretty much on my Instagram have been blowing up a lot of guys on Trinidad. Uh, Jamaica, St. Vincent especially, a lot of the guys support me um, they was talking a lot about one particular race the race with you and the other Mitsubishi Cole so the actually, since, since that my channel has blown blown up my Instagram has been blowing up a lot of questions have been asking so just introduce yourself to the channel let them know your name a little bit about the car stuff like that yeah um my name is Sherlock, um, people call me Lock. Uh, this is my Colt, um, Evo Swap Colt. What year is? Uh, it's a 1997. Um, it was original, originally original for a drive. Okay. Um, I did some work with it over the years. Um, the final setup here is a 2.4 liter um, stock bore. Um, it has a ported head. Um, the guy there that owns the Baleno, he ported the head. Right. Um, it has in GSC R2 cams, um, basically forged pistons, rods. Um, so a pretty, a pretty basic setup, rust on yeah, the piston yeah. and rods setup. Yeah, it's still running the stock NT manifold. Um, it has in a 62 millimeter Garrick GTW turbo, mm -hmm. and I converted the the setup from the two coil pack setup with a spark to full sequential. Right. Running a ECU Master ECU. Okay. Um, I did the harness. Uh, I forgot to actually finish the harness. Harness is incomplete. And um, did the tuning and the installation of the ECU and got some help from some guys to get the car together. Painted by Shane World. Nice. Um, do all my painting. Uh, re recommend him any paint work they want. His brother dealt with the 
basically bringing the car together. Right, right. Every aspect of the car. Right. His brother Dwayne has been a part of. So the brothers then, the brothers the in brothers, a hole. Yeah. The brothers in a hole. Um, usually they tell them what they want and we work together to achieve what we got to achieve. Okay, nice, nice. So, um, I'm just going to ask a few other questions now. Just by looking inside the car, you see you do a lot of changing up to the fuel system itself. Could you just care to explain a little bit about the fuel system? I saw some big canister back there, not sure exactly. Well, originally, I had the, um, I had a, the uh, Hellcat 525 single pump in the tank. Right. And I was getting a little issues with providing the fuel that the car needs, so I had to really cap the boots that were around. Um, on the E85, I could only get about maybe about 30 pounds before I start to run out of fuel. Right. 30, pounds. So what I did is I kept the Hellcat inside of there and I got a surge tank. Right. The surge tank has two pumps in it, two 340 uh, LPH pumps. Right. That coming out into a way into a single 10 AN um, line to the fuel rail, Magnus fuel rail. Okay. And that is running, they have four 21, FIC 2150. Um, CC injectors right. running. So from then, my fuel problems have been great, and we have the second pump coming in at around maybe around twenty five pounds or so. Okay, right. okay, I see. So with that there now, that allow you to run the boost that you want to run. Yes, with the, with the percentage of ethanol that they want to run. Okay, so you care to share the type of boost you're running, or, yeah. <laughs> or, or that's a secret? No, nah, you're tired about the secret. <laughs> right now, it's running thirty six pounds of boost. Thirty six pounds of boost. Um, we may take it up for the next race, as you know, that may be a contentious race. Right. From the first one, it has to continue. Right. So I will try to see how it feels at the 40 pounds. Right. And if it don't feel much different to me, or the times don't reflect a difference, I can put it back to the Put it back to the easy, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I know at the last event, um, not the last event, sorry, the, one of the last tests on tunes that we had when you were there, I actually were recording you as well. Um, I know you had encountered some issues with the oil oil issues, and so I think you had an issue with the oil line or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you to lose some oil pressure. Yeah, then it turned around and it spin a bearing and pain. <laughs> pain, because I know I know you was battling with this for about two weeks, yeah. but you actually had the engine put back up really fast. Mm -hmm. Then you had an oil leak. Then you had to pull back down, and then it was drama. You even came yeah. here. And the like, time I spent some time with you, and you were yeah. just fighting. Yeah. So, uh, I know that you have run your. I know that you did your personal best, which is a six point six. Um, just tell me a little bit about it because I know actually achieving a goal like that at this stage, and the car has so much development going forward. Um, just tell me a little bit of how you feel, uh, like when you actually did the pass. Um, when you were driving, coming back around to the picks, do you had any idea at all that you had run? Nah, I, <laughs> I actually, <laughs> when I actually had finished the pass, the car felt pretty good. Uh -huh. The first thing, the car, the first run, the car was having a little problems with the flat shift, and I had disabled it. Right. So I, um, I disabled the flat shift, and we did the pass. When I did the uh, the practice pass, there was silent. Um, I actually thought maybe um, the car was doing maybe a a seven or something like that right so when i came back and i saw the excitement and all all my friends are even was like um how it do a thing and they tell me look at the slip so i look at the slip a little bit and the slip was a little blurry uh -huh. because the, the quality of the slip was poor and right you know and i i seen the 6.6 .6, <laughs> but initially it was like that nah, can't be it that's what i'm saying no, so i'm looking through the, the, the headings uh-huh uh -huh. i keep seeing the, the um the time 6.6 .6, so then that's real. Yes, that's yes. That's videos going wrong with, with uh, you guys congratulating me. Correct, and, uh, correct, that's correct. That's really good considering all the work that we put All in. the headache you had. The work, man. We, we, that guy there that owned this car here, he did, he did down here with me helping me seat valves and putting the engine back together and taking the left at work and coming here and we as, pushing going through. Because as people don't know, so much work just goes, so much work goes on behind the scene. Yep. It's unbelievable. Uh, don't talk about this. This is a very expensive sport. So we all know um, Trying to get these cars prep and ready trying to Work behind the scene a lot of work goes into this coming home from your normal daily job 
then come in here as UJS says Shamar will normally come and give you some assistance all of the guys so pretty much this built is considered a team built team basically effort. A team effort and, and, a, and a, a Walmart show here we got we got Dwayne Calendar that which is Shane brother yes that is he's here all the time and we trying to find ways that we can get some more powder it correct so actually met the little um little box there to help direct the air we usually have a um a duct right a, a headlight that we have cut out to, to provide the air there that works well um shamar is who's dealing with the head he ported the head and he actually sit down here one day trying to get them valves to seat <laughs> for some reason we have to end up seating all the valves you know you got um nines nines is also a good assistant good assistant so, as well so people, you got a good so you got a good team work good people josh greg all those guys so uh, are you looking here is this the typical honda honda guy that drive around with a laptop in his car mm -hmm. is this the really typical honda guy or nah um <laughs> that was actually the first time we start the car um well the second time we start the car since the event right so we had to actually connect jumper cables and things to crank the car to crank it up and I just wanted to make sure that my oil pressures and everything was still in order. Nice. So I don't encounter the surprises. Right. You know, you know, before you start at these cars, you gotta check the intakes and make sure you ain't got no snails in them. Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's true. It's so true. I gotta do a little pre-check before you start. So you consider this car? Called the guys was asking me if this car is a street-driven car. Not anymore. Not anymore. It's only only track now. Only track. Yeah. Okay. It used to be street-driven, but. You find that it's these, not, com it's not, not comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. Okay, yeah. understandable. So, guys, as I said, I'm here with Sherlock. Uh, he explained exactly a lot about the car, so you all can see for yourself what's going on. And um, before Sherlock, this setup here, um, you could give me a rough estimate. Will you estimate the horsepower could be? Uh, I would like to believe that I could get in the wrong. In the current term, around 700 hours. Around 700. So, you have any. You're thinking about taking it to Dino or anything? Yes, yeah. The plan is to actually tune it on the Dino because honestly, this car has not had much tuning because I don't like to drive on the road. Right. Because it's a, it can be very noisy. Right. As well as, you know, we're trying to, to keep any recklessness on the road. People are startled when they hear it. Correct. And they usually react. Correct. That could cause a lot of accidents correct so um when i went to the road basically i had it on a, a conservative tune in, with the timing and i would like to really stretch it out a little more on safely on the demo. okay yeah. that sounds good that sounds good so i'm here uh could you start it and let me hear it guys you can hear it sounds good sounds healthy sounds really healthy I must hear uh, I was an answer so I didn't get you an answer so what type of fuel you want right now I want E85 mix with pump gas E85 so mix of pump I have an ethanol sensor in it and we usually set the levels to around 55 percent ethanol okay so the more pump gas you put in there will reduce the ethanol right there. so around 55 percent okay yeah. nice yes guys so i'm here um as you have it here i don't know as you just uh is is not street driven anymore but is it maybe you could go for a drive anyway or not really yeah, sure sure okay 
Yes, guys, we actually gonna get a drive in it, you know. Just gonna get a drive around the block. Around the block. No, you can drive. 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 So yes, guys, we're gonna actually get go for a drive in it. Um I'm very excited obviously to sit down in this because I never sit down in a 700 horsepower um Mishibishi before before we drive. So you know what guys? We're gonna just go for a drive around the block, see how it feels, and I'm gonna let you all guys know how it feels. I ain't always scare me too much, man. It's true. I ain't always scare me too much at all. You might end up convincing me now to go from Honda now to the Evo. Huh? All you want is Guys, getting in the car. Yes. yes. Alright guys, we are here in the car. I forget to tell you what guys I have a raw cage as well. It's cage as a walk, see? <laughs> 